Hi everybody, thanks for tuning into another video. Today we are going to be looking at the ANCOVO oximeter, pulse oximeter. So I did previously um, review another pulse oximeter. It was this one, the AGP Tech uh, pulse oximeter, which I'll just bring back in a minute. Um, I bought another one for a family member, so I thought I'd give it a quick review. This one is slightly different in that it actually features an OLED display where the previous one features an uh, LED display. So we'll go ahead and compare them. We'll just open it up and have a quick look at it. Um, there's not really much to look at with these devices, but let's, uh, if we can get the box open, actually have a look, see what it looks like, compare them size-wise. Uh, and I guess main thing is gonna be just comparing the screen and seeing how different it looks. So there's the device itself. Looks pretty much the same as the other one. Um, I'll quickly get this out of the bag if I can. All right, there we go. So why would you want one of these well, with coronavirus all around us? Um, it's probably become something essential that you'd want in your uh, medi bag now or your uh, your medical box now. Um, very cheap. You're looking at average price between 15 to 20 pounds for a decent one on Amazon. I'll post a link for this one below, um, but it will be great. It, it, well, hopefully you'd never have to use it, but you know, if you start suffering symptoms um, of uh, COVID-19, you might want to slip this on your finger and just check um, if your uh, blood oxygen levels are good. So for such a small investment, keeping it aside just in case may well help you um, in the future in a significant way. Just quickly having a look, we've got some standard sort of whatever brand batteries they are, alkaline batteries. I don't think rechargeables work in here, unfortunately, because of the voltage. These are 1.5 volt standard alkaline. Rechargeables are normally 1.2 volts. So I did try rechargeables in the uh, in this one and they didn't work. So just bear that in mind. And I don't know why I'm trying to open that. There's a lanyard there. Notice in here there is also a carry case of some sort or storage case. Um, it goes in there and you just pull the drawstring and that's kind of it, right? The lanyard would uh, attach to the device itself. So the lanyard would attach to there. Let's just quickly go ahead and turn it on and then um, we'll go ahead and bring the other one um, back into view and I'll just pull it out of the box again and we can compare the displays and maybe I'll stick one on each finger and see if they're both giving roughly the same readings or if it's all just a big hoax. So it's on. Looks like it's got quite a nice display there. Um, definitely is um, uh, different. It's got four memory settings by the looks of that, I'm guessing. M1, M2, M3, M4. Uh, I don't know what you'd want to store. Maybe previous readings. Um, so let's just put that on the finger there. Um, bleeping away. Taking some readings, hopefully they're good, 99, 84, 83. So I think one on the left here is the actual blood oxygen level and the one on the right is the actual heartbeat. So you can see it's um, making a little pulsing noise if I just hold that to the microphone there. You might be able to hear that bleeping. My microphone cuts out a lot of background noise so you may not hear it. Um, but ultimately it's bleeping away. It's um, Nice, it's nice. So what is it saying? It's saying poor signal, measure again. So maybe because I moved my finger, um, I don't know why it's saying that. Um, it's got an, it's got a rotation on the screen, not an auto rotation, but if I press that button, you can see it's definitely um, switching around. So depending on which finger you've got it and how you want to read it, uh, if it's on this finger, obviously then it would be upside down by default. You press the button and you've got it the right way around again. Let's go ahead and hold that button. Um, I'll probably have to read the instruction on this. There's definitely more to this one than the other one. So you can set your alarms for high and low um, readings, I suppose. Um, and then the mode, so spot check, bleep on or off and exit. And if I hold the uh, button again, it starts flashing the actual digits. So you can see it's switching through each option there when I'm holding the button. Um, for the life of me, I have no idea how to 
uh, get back to the sort of um, spot check continuous. So let's say we want to do continuous monitoring. Okay, um, and then let's just hold that again and let's get all the way to exit. And I think we can exit if I press that. There we go. So I'd like to have thought I would have exited. Maybe if I just leave it um, for a little while, it will exit itself. Right, I think I've got to do a long press on exit. There we go. And it's now taking a reading, I suppose, from my finger again. That's in continuous recording mode, so I suppose that's just going to keep going. So whilst that is carrying on, um, let's leave it carrying on. and Let's pull out the old one. This one had a nice carry case. So this one, just to show you again, was AGP Tech. Um, that's still bleeping away nicely. And this one actually had a nicer carry case, I feel. So it had a little bit more of a sort of neoprene type case with a Velcro thing on there. Um, and it actually, I think, in my personal opinion, feels nicer on the finger. They both got a sort of soft, well, this one's got a plastic finish on the inside. This one's got a soft touch finish on the inside. So your finger definitely is, is more grippy on the finger. Um, this one's a little bit more slippery. So finger seems to move around in there quite a bit. Uh, let's just compare the display. So this one's just got a standard LED display. It looks like the old calculator, crystal LCD type displays. Uh, it's an LED display on this one. Very basic function on and off only. Nothing else fancy going on there. So we've got them both running side by side. So let's see what they're saying. The one on the right is saying my blood oxygen levels are at 97%. I think that's percentage. Um, and then the one on the left is saying I'm at 99%. Which one would I trust? I don't know. Let's go in between percent. Pretend I'm at 98%. Uh, heartbeat, roughly the same. 89, 88, 90, I think. Um, probably fair to say that these things are as accurate as each other. I'm not going to say they're accurate because I don't know how accurate they actually are. Size-wise, they're roughly the same. The one on the right here is slightly smaller. It's nice shape. It's got a nice curvy sort of shape. I like the color coding or blue and white. I think it goes nice, but then you can never go wrong with all black. Um, the OLED display, again, is definitely very nice. Um, it looks nicer than the sort of box standard display you've got here. They, this one, they both got battery meters on them as well. So you can see the battery meter here. And on this one, you can see the battery meter here. Now, in terms of battery life, you're not going to be using these things much, but you probably want to up refresh the batteries every now and then just to make sure when you do need it, the batteries are good to go. I don't know which ones are going to drain more battery. Um, maybe the OLED, who knows, uh, is going to dress less battery um, just due to the type of technology. Um, and ultimately, battery's going to sit in there, probably last a long time. These aren't going to get used much, right? So there you go. Comparison between two pulse oximeters, one OLED, one LED. Both around the same price point. I think I paid about $17.99 for each of them, to be honest. Both serving the same function, giving roughly the same reading. So I think, uh, as I said, about as accurate or inaccurate as each other, maybe. Um, they're generally giving the same sort of results. They're look, both on the table now, 99% blood oxygen. My heartbeat is sitting at around 88 to 90 um, by the looks of it, beats per minute or whatever it is. So there you go. Um, hopefully this has been useful for you if you're trying to decide whether you should buy an OLED pulse oximeter or an LED pulse oximeter. Maybe this helps you to decide. I don't have a preference, to be honest. I think they're both nice. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed that video. If you have, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Thumbs up. And uh, if you've got any questions around these two devices, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below. And also, please do not forget to support my channel by hitting the subscribe button in the corner there. I will be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.